looking at the phrase, dream big, it was clear that there was something wrong with it. Dream big, and then what was supposed to happen? The initiative, the action, the what's next was completely lost when thinking about what the phrase really means. At being just 16, we were lucky enough to decide to grow the phrase, dream big and do bigger. Having this mentality allowed us to see that opportunities lied all around us. But eventually, or inevitably, there are steps to every journey. In our journey, we had one main goal in mind, to solve the massive problem of food waste ending up in landfills. The first part of our journey was to identify the magnitude of the problem we were up against. After researching, we found that in the United States and across the globe, commercial institutions such as restaurants and grocery stores send massive amounts of food waste to landfills every year. Once in landfills, this food waste decomposes and releases methane, a greenhouse gas over 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. This creates a real environmental threat. When looking towards gearing our solution, we decided to take the entrepreneurial route because implementing your product or your solution in a market allows it to be widespread and make a real impact. As young entrepreneurs, we were highly enthusiastic and optimistic for the journey ahead. We were ready to embrace the lessons that would come with the entrepreneurial process. But before we go any further, I think it's important to define what sets an entrepreneur apart from everyone else. First, entrepreneurs take initiative. There's so many problems in the world, definitely more than enough for everyone to choose from. Taking initiative doesn't mean trying to tackle as many problems as you can. Instead, taking initiative means finding a problem that you're passionate about and applying yourself to a solution in that area. In our case, we were both passionate about the environment and food waste in particular. So what did we do? We decided we would gear a solution around environmental sustainability. And some solutions like this include composting. Next, an entrepreneur has to be unique in their approach to the problem. In order to stand out in a world which seems to be constantly innovating, all entrepreneurs have to take a unique approach. In our case, we looked at conventional waste disposal methods and how they did not provide an alternative to sending food waste to landfills, despite there being thousands of composting facilities existing nationwide, which would provide a far more environmentally friendly option. Instead of buying a fleet of garbage disposal trucks to take the waste from grocery stores and restaurants to composting facilities, we decided to use the gig economy business model of privately contra contracting anyone with a pickup truck uh, in order to transport the food waste, similar to how Uber contracts their drivers. Let's see, uh, who owns a pickup truck in the room? A couple people? <laughs> All right, so uh, who at least knows someone who owns a pickup truck? There we go, that's almost everyone in Texas, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we really saw this as an obvious solution to the problem at hand since people would just be able to use this readily existing hauler pool in order to transport the food waste. In order to connect the grocery store and restaurant to the composting facility, we decided to create an app to have the haulers take the waste and, and automate the entire process. Lastly, an entrepreneur has to exhibit resilience in, in addition to taking initiative and taking a unique approach to the problem. Entrepreneurs can always face a struggle, but even on the verge of failure, you have to learn to overcome. So you will face difficulty not just once or twice or three times, but so many times, in fact, that this entrepreneurial midlife crisis of sorts can be called the trough of despair in the startup world. Even at such a young age, National clubs and programs allow high school students to experience and gain exposure to the entrepreneurial process. Through these programs, these students learn the ability to de develop revolutionary ideas that can have a big impact in solving their problem. This is incredibly beneficial for society because young people have the ability to use their unique viewpoint and unleash their creativity and passion to solve problems that others may not have thought of. Some of these students go on to develop the next big idea. Our big idea was our company, which we called Scraps. Once we had the logistics of our food waste diversion business planned out, it was time to start hustling. We be began by contacting a compost facility, and we were happy to learn that they were enthusiastic and ready, to, and ready to take our food waste. Then we contracted haulers, people who are ready to start transporting the food waste. And then we began talking to restaurants and grocery stores and then even more restaurants and grocery stores. And then, you guessed it, even more restaurants and grocery stores. <laughs> All the while, we were confident in our ability to have a customers and to deliver our service. So we continued programming the application, working harder than ever. Unfortunately, months of consistent work flew by, but not a single haul had been conducted. 
we'd gotten so used to the phrase of, wow, this sounds like something we can definitely implement. Here's my manager's email. A phrase that soon came to mean rejection. We really faced these issues and had to learn in order to overcome and noticed a few problems with scraps in the business model itself uh, that we took a step back and decided to analyze. One key issue with scraps was that although we could acquire the suppliers in our business, we couldn't acquire the actual customers. As I mentioned earlier, we had the compost facility ready. We had numerous haulers ready. But as, as much as we tried, we couldn't get even a single restaurant or grocery store to hand over their money for our environmentally, but not economically viable business. Additionally, our age was a very significant factor that we had to overcome. It was very difficult being ignored, sending emails to managers, and having trouble requesting meetings to try to further our process. This just ended up making this whole journey far longer and more tedious. Lastly, we faced the difficulties of both handling the demands of a student and handling the demands of an entrepreneur. We, like all other teenagers, despite having this bold idea in mind, had to attend school, attend club meetings, and do homework for several hours in the day. Let's say you start out with 100 units of student entrepreneurial passion and energy. The first 60 are spent on the first failure that you encounter. The next 20 on the next failure, and so on and so forth. Then you have that AP physics assignment due at 10 p.m. tonight. <laughs> After submitting the assignment at 9.59, at 10.01 p.m. you realize that, uh, why exactly did I take this on? Then I still have a dozen emails to send. This was one really major roadblock that we had to overcome and see that student plus entrepreneur may not have been the best balance, but it's something that is required for being a successful entrepreneur. Being both a student and an entrepreneur is a very exciting and unique experience. Throughout our process, we've learned some very valuable lessons that we'd love to share with you. First, it's really important to seek help. You're not in this alone, and in solving your problem, you need to draw on the advice of those more experienced than you. We found incredible insight getting advice from parents, teachers, and industry professionals, all who gave us really useful information. Next, no action leads to no results. It might sound cliche, but the inspiration is really just a small fraction of the bigger picture. I might just be echoing a personal trainer, but yeah, if you don't put in any action, you won't get any results out of it. Also, it's incredibly important to believe in the vision of what you're doing. Rather than focus on just earning money, it's important to look at the problem that you're trying to solve and work with like-minded people to actually go out and solve that problem and persevering through that. Lastly, anyone can make an impact. Regardless of your age, if you have the idea and the passion to pursue an idea, we highly encourage you to do so and don't give up right from the beginning. Work hard and your idea truly has the potential to change the world. Regardless if you plan to be an entrepreneur or a businessman as you continue in life, we hope that you take our lessons of initiative, being unique, and showing resilience, and be an entrepreneur of your own passions. We hope that you can take some of the lessons we've learned and apply them to other endeavors that you may go through. And also, if at all possible, we highly encourage you to be entrepreneurs. It's been an incredible growth opportunity for us, and we believe it'll be for you as well. There's an old Chinese proverb that starts, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We've already taken the first 100 steps with scraps, and while we may have put a pause on the journey, sometimes taking the 101st step takes a year or two in the making. We look forward in the near future not only to pursue scraps, but just entrepreneurship in general, and highly encourage everyone to pursue their very own radical endeavor as well. Thank you.